fun. Um, <laughs> recording in progress. I just got the meeting update. Got it. All right. So thank you. As as uh, Kevin mentioned, today's session is about something that I call virtual presentations, and, and I'll get into what that means in a minute. I did kind of widgy the title a little bit um, in the sort of uh, waning moments before the presentation, so you'll bear with me. Let me get my, hang on one second. I went ahead and pushed the wrong button. Let me get the right button where it needs to be. All right. Uh, can everyone hear me okay? Yeah, what's up? Okay, uh, yeah, sorry, I still haven't figured out all this technology stuff. Okay, so my topic was uh, exotic experiences are remembered. Now, basically our brains hold on to new experiences and you can take advantage of that when you're instructing. Uh, consider your normal PowerPoint presentations, right? There's lots of text, there's sometimes an image or a chart, but they're the worst when uh, the presenter just reads the slide verbatim. Now, your challenge is to be creative. Stimulate the brains of your participants and, and that experience will become front of mind, front of the line, if you will. So uh, you can use interesting fonts, uh, colors, animations, for example. Uh, sometimes it's good to, what? Hang on, my computer's starting to act up. Can you still see my, oh crap. Well, that's not good. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, hang on, hang on, one sec. I got a, I got a tech person I know. She's the best, best person with technology. Just give me one second. Oh no, not again. What if I told you about exotic experiences? I, I, uh, yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. I, I don't need I told you so. Okay. Jeez, can you just help me help me fix this? There's an anomalous power signature in the rear viridium circuits. The central carbon neogenic is offline. I just need to unspam the KDM2 compactor, encrypt the BIOS, and defragment your database logs. Yeah, that, that's that's what I would have done too. Hey, look, it sounds like it's gonna be a while. Uh, I'll tell the class to reschedule. The only and you're all set. What? How do you want to pay? Oh. Venmo? Cash. Cash. Hand it over. Okay. Thanks. Hey, can you avoid all this next time? Yeah. Just remember the rule. Exotic, Exotic experiences, experiences are, are remembered. remembered. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Uh, okay, so I made an error at the very beginning. It was a defect, of course. I didn't start the video when I thought I was sure. I shared the audio, unfortunately, but not the right screen. So some of you saw only the slide at the very beginning, but I think it still performed its purpose, right? Uh, when I got around to actually sharing the video itself, um, some of you believed that my I had received a blue screen of death and that other things were going wrong. So <laughs> thank you. The, uh, let me see here, let me get my actual presentation up and running. So it's not called exotic experiences are remembered. It's called virtual training. And this is the answer to, couldn't I just watch a recording of this session, right? How many times have we given a session or we prepared to give a session and somebody says, uh, can I just, can I just, will you be recording it? Can I watch it later? Cause you know, that that's what I maybe prefer to do. And I don't know if I'll be able to show up. And yes, we want to make that available. It's great that, uh, that that's an option now is, is we can tell people, you know, if you're not able to make it, or if you miss a few minutes, um, but my concern becomes, you know, are people really getting the same level of engagement? Are they even watching the recording at all? Are they watching it while doing some other task? Um, but then there's also not the opportunity to, to pause and to ask questions and to probe and to challenge, right? The kinds of things that you could do in an actual in-room facilitation. So we're going to go into how we got to this sort of title and purpose and, and method and whatnot um, as we go through the day. And that's what the, that's what the actual session is, supposed to, is about. Um, so let me jump into my formal content. So this is the journey for today. We're going to talk about leading by example. We're leading with examples. An example would be the example that I just gave earlier, right? Of uh, you know being able to sort of wow people and show them something they haven't seen before maybe. Set expectations for the day, right? Table setting is really important. Getting to know your group is really important, usually with some sort of icebreaker or mandatory fun. Be your true self. I'll talk about what that means to me and maybe ask some questions about what it means to you. Making it as interactive as possible. Sending folks in the session on some sort of path, bringing them home and celebrating. So we'll talk about each of these at some length in just a moment as I get through the day. The high level goal here is that ultimately you wanna be able to reach through the screen 
and give a big warm hug to the, the folks in the audience. You wanna make them feel like you're connecting with them. Uh, you really wanna give them a reason to not watch cat videos, uh, to feel like the time that they spent in that session was important, to feel like they were engaged and that they, that they either came away with something that they intended to get from that session uh, or that they were connected with or that they learned something, okay? Um, so it, yes, it is a big, warm, loving digital hug. But every once in a while, you also want to crawl through the screen and make sure that you are grabbing their attention and just making sure that if you look away, this is going to be really problematic. Um, <laughs> not in an aggressive way, but there's a balance, right? You want to make sure that you're, you're letting people feel engaged, but you want to make sure that you still maintain that, that energy, right? <laughs> All right. So part of setting expectations for the day, I'll, I'll try to set expectations for this session. So I prefer if, if folks raise their hand, uh, like literally physically raise their hand when they have a question. Um, part of the reason is because um, I, I may not see, I have four screens going on at the moment to make this as seamless as I possibly can. Um, so I'm likely to not see the chat. I have the Brady Bunch window, I have my video shared screen, I have my email over here and I have the presentation and then I have my presenter notes. There's a lot going on. So the chat, I'm just likely to not see it. You can chat things at each other, um, but raising your hand or doing the digital hand raise function in Zoom is actually really helpful. Um, for those who don't know, there's in the reactions button for Zoom, there's like a, a hands clapping and a hand raise. There's actually one that says raise hand. And if you click on that one, it moves your little box up into the top left and it sort of sets up like a queue so that if five people have their hands raised, I know who raised their hand first and I can sort of call on them in that order when we're having a really vigorous conversation and, and that sort of thing. I have this sort of uh, anticipation of participation across the nation. What that means is that I really hope, and I, I set the expectation that um, folks in my sessions will engage in some way, right? Whether that is uh, by asking me questions and interrupting me throughout, or by participating in some activity that we have set up. Um, but I really want folks to know that, I don't know if you have, uh, if folks have been to like SeaWorld, you know, where they have the you know, you, you go and you see the dolphins or whatever. And if you sit in the front row or the front two rows, it's called the splash zone, right? I tell people, whenever you go to one of my sessions, you're always in the splash zone. So please like be ready to be called upon. I may say, hey, June, what do you think about what I just said? Or Kim, you know, uh, have you ever seen this work? I really try to make it like, like <laughs> put, put participants head on a swivel so that they have, you know, they have to go, mm, uh, I think it was great. Uh, please say it again so that I could really commit it to memory, right? Um, but, <laughs> but it's my way of making, you know, connections with folks. So again, Anticipation of participation across the nation, and in this case, many nations, which is super exciting. The PowerPoint can be sent to folks for this session. Um, just email me. I don't know if there's a repository that we have uh, for Lean AG. If so, I'll place it there. But if not, go ahead and shoot me an email if for whatever reason you want my slides. Be honest and inquisitive. This is sort of a standard for me. I really want people to you know, not be afraid to ask questions, to uh, be comfortable not knowing what they don't know, and to just talk about it. Being mindful of our mute is really important. So thank you all for being muted. If I heard lawnmowers in the background, that would make me sad. Um, one cool feature about Zoom, I don't know if it's the setting for this particular instance of Zoom, you're welcome to try it right now. Um, if you are, again, I'll caveat this. If you're in the app version and you're not also watching cat videos, if you press the space bar for some folks, it'll unmute you if you're muted. So if you're like, where's my mouse for my mute, my unmute, if you just, if you're muted and you press the space bar, can folks try that right now? Just, I wanna see like, does that work for folks? Roberta, yeah. I saw yours I saw yours go off for a second. No, just press the space bar on the keyboard. I heard one person say, yeah. Oh no, okay. Emma, it looks like it's working for you. Yes, it works for some. It Michelle, was. interesting. Okay, good to know. So it's something that you can try. And if you do have a downloaded version of, of Zoom, make sure you have the most updated version and, and look in your settings. It's, it's in your settings and there, press the space bar to unmute. It's pretty cool. Um, I already mentioned that I'm likely to miss the chat. I also want to say there's going to be no breaks for today. It's important to let people know, like, can I have a 10-minute break partway through and that sort of thing? This needs to be your active window to space mute. Yes, Michelle, thank you. Um, that's part of it. Like, if somebody has another, like, if they've clicked into some other window, then the space bar button won't work. Um, okay, part of setting expectations, letting people know if and when there's going to be a break. So if I tell people there will be a break at 11.15, I make every effort to make sure that we break at 11 15 because if I don't, that's sort of like me breaking my pact and breaking my trust with folks. So if I tell you there's going to be 10 minutes at 11 15, I will do my darndest to make sure we have that 10 minute break at 11 15. But for this one, no breaks. 
sorry, I think you should be okay for about 45 minutes through, through this one. Uh, but of course, if you gotta go, you gotta go. So if something comes up or you need a bio break, please do so. Don't feel like you need to you know, break your bladder on my part. Okay, um, getting through your group was one of my high level um, pieces, one of my high level notes, right? It's really important when you're, when you're having a session, when I'm having a session, what I believe anyways, um, to get to know who you're working with, to get to know a little bit about the folks. Um, I often will ask name, I'll ask area, either what part of the country you're in or what institution you're with. Um, and then I like to ask first, usually tax paying job or first official job ever where you've got like a paycheck, not like babysitting and the like. Um, I picked up a trick from one of my, one of my co-facilitators, uh, an ally of mine that um, one way to make sure that you're controlling timeframes is that you challenge people to ask to, uh, to complete this in one breath. So can you say your name, your area, and what your first job was without like taking an additional breath in between or, or that sort of thing, which is kind of fun. Does anybody want to try this? I did set the expectation of participation across the nation. This is your chance. I will call on people. Oh, I forgot. Oh, if there's ever like an awkward silence and like people don't volunteer, I tell people that I will tell dad jokes. So if you, I'm okay with awkward silences, I can feel them and fill them and amuse myself by telling really horrible jokes. Abdi, I saw you unmute. Does that mean you'd like to try this exercise with us? Yes. I, I don't know if I, I might've heard, I'm not sure why the recording is stopping and starting. Maybe is it because people are sharing their information? Is that weird? Um, okay, I will share mine. You can record mine if you want. Um, I'm gonna, I'm, I, I apologize. I did not lead by example in, in going through this one for myself. So I'm gonna take one single breath. I'm gonna try this in one breath. My name is Antonio Nava. I'm with UC San Diego. My first tax paying job ever was at a video rental place called Hollywood Video. Cool, all in one breath. I didn't go ah, in the middle of it. So I apologize, I did not lead by example. Um, does uh, one or two other people want to try this one out? See if you can do it in one breath. I can go. Please. Uh, my name is Magda. I'm in Glasgow. First job was at McDonald's. Hey, thank you. Perfect. And it sounded like one breath. One more? Yeah, I'll have a go as well. My name is John Palmer. I'm also in Glasgow. And my first job was working in a music shop selling guitars. Oh, I love that first job. I love this question. Um, just one or two, maybe Joanna. I, I don't want to deprive anyone of the opportunity to jump in. Go ahead. My name is Joanna. I'm coming from Technical University from Dance in Poland. And my first job ever was uh, switchboard production. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Very cool. Um, that's a fun exercise for a number of reasons. One, I mean, it's fun to hear about people and to get to know where they're at. Um, but two, it also gives me a sense of, you know, where are people from? What are their backgrounds a little bit? Um, sometimes if we're doing certain kinds of training, I'll ask them, you know, what are your assumptions about Lean Six Sigma, for example, right? What do you want to learn out of this class? That'll give me a sense of what people's, uh, why they're approaching the class and, and how I can maybe tailor the day. Um, this question, though, a first job ever uh, for Lean, I know this is Lean HE, when we're doing Lean classes, I love this question in particular, because it gets people thinking about what was it like on that first day in that first job when I'm not, you know, further along in my career and I'm not burdened by we've always done it that way and, you know, like tribal knowledge and policy and that sort of thing. Um, when you first get to a space and you start asking, so what am I supposed to do when I'm here? Um, you know, that, that really uninhibited approach to like, well, why do we do it that way? Like, is, is there maybe some better way? Like, it seems this is kind of janky and, and mismatchy of, of, you know, it feels like this could be improved, right? Um, but when you're there in your first job, you don't know what you don't know, which is great, I think, because as we're going through the methodology of lean, right, and talking about defining and understanding as much as you can about current state, I find this to be a really good way to, to re-baseline folks and to say, imagine you were coming into this job, you'd never seen it before, even though maybe you know all the ins and outs, or you know some of it, come in and ask those questions and do that probing as though you were there for the first time and they were giving you the, the, the freedom to ask all of these questions, right? All right. So there's a couple of reasons why to do this. And I mentioned a few of them. You know, one was getting to know the group. Another one was uh, getting that information about how can I how can I tailor the day? How can I speed up in certain areas or slow down in other areas? But it's also important because it validates a couple things. One, can we use the technology, right? Does everyone know how to mute and unmute? Um, one thing that I've taken to doing is showing everyone the reaction, the, the raise hand function and just asking them all, raise your hand. Everyone literally needs to, in this moment, raise their hand. Um, and then I'll call on you in that order. It's a great way to make sure that I haven't missed anyone 
as I'm going through the, the morning thing and going, wait, my Brady Bunch windows have moved around, right? So I'll call on XYZ person as we're going through the raise hands. And as we're doing that, people are lowering their hands. Um, Roberta, are you practicing the raise hand or did you have a question? No, I was just proving I was listening and I've learned how to unmute and mute as well. So wow. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for testing it out and for proving out the technology. And you can see what I mean, right? It really gives people a chance. It gives folks a chance to practice because not everyone has used Zoom. Maybe people have used Teams or Google or some other platform, right? Um, so if we're in this tool, I want to make sure that everyone knows how to use the tool because I have an expectation of participation across the nation. I want to validate, do we all know, do we all have the basic tools needed to be able to do so, right? All right, so let's move in right along. Okay, being your true self. This is one of my most favorite things. Um, I say puberty is nerfed, right? You're going to make mistakes. I made a mistake at the very beginning of the class. Um, <laughs> I meant to be sharing the video screen and I shared the audio but I didn't switch over the video and it kind of jambled up part of it and, and it, 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 it had an issue, but that's okay. Own it, move on. Um, you know, I could have restarted the video. I could have apologized. I could have died of embarrassment and just left the room and said, all right, never mind. The session is now a total failure. Own it, move on. We're human. Uh, I don't think anyone expects a, a presenter to be perfect at every time, uh, especially right this sort of digital format, this, this digital world we're all still getting used to. Um, one of the main reasons to, to own your, your mistakes in a way, right? We learn from them. But the other is that we're in these sessions, we're so often trying to get people to believe something they didn't believe before or to follow us in this methodology or to, to learn something from us, right? Um, so they need to trust us, right? I, it's my, I, I would never wanna learn from somebody that I don't trust. If I don't believe that this person is genuine and real and cares about the stuff and knows about the stuff, um, there's a lack of trust there which is going to cause me maybe to like start probing and poking in other different ways. Um, also, this being your true self, it opens up hopefully people who who might be hesitant at the in the start of the session to participate to like raise their hand and say, well, what if I ask a question and it's totally wrong? I mean, I was totally wrong from the very start set of this presentation, right? So don't worry about it. Like I really want to just open this up and make it as warm as possible. This is part of uh, that warm digital hug across the screen formality. So, um, oh. And then this last bullet, um, knowing your content, right? If my whole computer broke down and I had a blue screen of death and I, I literally did have that, I could still talk to the folks in this room about what it was I was gonna present about, right? I, don't, I should not be overly reliant on the slides. And I know we've heard this before, but it bears repeating. Don't just read the text on your slides verbatim, right? The text on the slides should be minimal and it should be there to sort of supplement the conversation that you're having in the room. That's the way that I like to approach it. Um, I took this data um, to sort of prove out a point. So this is, uh, I put a smartwatch on, right? And I was measuring my heart rate and I rested for a little while. I was watching TV and, and eating chips or something. So this is my sort of resting heart rate. And then I put that same smartwatch on when I was gonna go do a, a live Zoom presentation. And I took a look at the data afterwards. Um, so you can see, uh, I, I got 12 minutes of aerobic exercise. I had nine minutes of weight control and I had almost two minutes of anaerobic exercise. I can tell you when those two minutes were, it's when my, my little headset here started saying, battery is about to die. <laughs> and I was like, no. <laughs> In the middle of this presentation, literally when I was taking these measurements, it was like, you're, you're about to not have headphones anymore. Um, and I was trying to think, while I was talking, I was trying to think about what am I going to do when these things die and how do I pivot and what are my backups? Um, it, was, it was something else. So um, I have participated in, in uh, public speaking practice Toastmasters. I have given a number of presentations of different kinds, uh, tons and tons of yellow belt classes, a lot of white belt classes, um, different kinds of presentations on several different topics, right? I still get nervous. Right? I have a theater degree. I studied theater acting. I spent several, several hours on stage in front of people. I still get nervous. Right? Public speaking, even if it's digital, is still one of our fears. And I'll tell you, it doesn't get any better when folks are, are <laughs> when, when I see a bunch of black boxes with little names in them, and I don't see faces, and I don't see smiles, and I don't know if people are laughing at my dad jokes or things are landing. It's so hard. It feels like I don't know if anyone else, it, please use the reaction button of some sort. It feels kind of like I am on stage. I'm trying to give a, 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 I'm a comedian on stage and it's just dead silent, 
Like if you're if you're a comedian and you're just bombing on stage and there's like nobody laughing, they're all laughing on the inside because they're all muted, right, in the dark. That's kind of what it's like. And it's so scary. Um, but you kind of just need to just go for it, right? Just sort of jump off. I see a couple of laughs, a couple of oh, faces, um, <laughs> thumbs up. Um, know that that's normal. Know that that feeling is okay, right? Sort of like uh, it's going to happen. I don't want anyone to, to have this sense that this kind of presentation is just easy for certain people. And maybe it is. Maybe there's a unicorn out there that, that goes and does this kind of presentation and doesn't get the heart flutters, right? I still do. And I've done this time and time and time again. So this is part of being my true self. I want everyone to know that I'm not perfect, that I still get nervous. I hope you do too. Not that I hope you to be nervous, but like, you know, you're human like me. Because um, <laughs> otherwise I'm presenting myself and, and everyone else is like, we're, nah, we're fine. Okay, so uh, I'll move on unless anyone has any questions, wants to challenge my data gathering methods or anything like that. I had somebody call me out. They say, well, you only measured like three and a half minutes of resting heart rate and 20 minutes of, uh, you know, high elevation heart rate. And I said, oh, maybe I should go back to my, my sofa and for work, I should sit for 20 minutes and just relax for a solid 20 minutes. <laughs> I said, I'm, I'm working, leave me alone. Um, all right, let's move right along. Pulling back the curtain. Okay, so um, they say necessity is the mother of invention. This is what our classes used to look like. Uh, between 15 and up to 65 people would be in our yellow belt sessions, in our, in our peak days, right? In our meet space training days. They were very interactive. We had little food passed around the room. People would get up and, and move around the space. Um, they would literally move the furniture, right? As part of the process of the day. Um, it was very interactive. It was very fun. It was very hands-on. Uh, essentially, we'd give everyone a job, right? And then they would run through that job and that job would be how we gather data for the process that we're going to improve. And then we would try to make an improvement that we'd run the job again with those improvements. Um, it was very, very interactive. Get up and move around the space. Um, nobody was allowed to sit in the back with their cameras off and their microphones off and the muted, that sort of thing. Everyone was participating throughout the day. Um, it was fun. It was amazing. It was magical. It was very well received. And then sort of our hearts were broken. <laughs> And uh, I, I won't say why, I think everyone knows why, but we had to move into a virtual space, right? We had to take a look at what we we're doing. And, you know, when we look at a process and let's say it's a paper process and they're like, we're gonna go into some new digital system. We tell people, this is your opportunity then for continuous improvement. Right? This is the best time to look at your process, to look at what you're doing and to try to improve it before you put it into some digital tool. And so we took this as an opportunity then to say, well, what can we do? So we started with these questions, sort of the existential questions of, do we pause and sort of wait this thing out? Thank goodness we didn't. Um, can we recreate this magic? Is it possible to, to have it still be as engaging and as fun as it was? You know, do we just take our slides and, and port them over? So we took a look at all these questions and we had these answers. These were our initial go around. We said, no, we're not just gonna stop. We need to soldier on. This is important work, especially now, right? When people are looking at their processes and saying, how are we doing things? Uh, when should we do them? What's important to do? What's value add? How do we move forward, right? We definitely took a look at our continuous improvement efforts and said, what was important about them? What was valuable? What was effective, right? So what, what made it magical? Can we bottle that? And there was a lot of uncertainty. We weren't sure if it was going to be, do we, do we create some sort of asynchronous platform where people go in and they do modules? You know, what, what benefits are there to that? What drawbacks are there to that? So we really, really took a really deep look at our program and this is what we came up with. So we have a new simulation, right? In the, in the meat space, let's call it, people were given a job as subject matter experts and they did the job as subject matter experts to gather the information. What we pivoted to was we said, you know what? We're gonna have a process and we're gonna have subject matter experts already ready and we'll have a sponsor prepared for them that they talk to and that they ask questions of. Um, and we'll have them be sort of Lean Six Sigma experts in training. So they're doing on-the-job training while they're doing the class, which really worked out a lot better because instead of going through the training and saying, you're going to be a subject matter expert who can participate in projects, we were telling people, we want to prepare you to be able to run these projects and these initiatives. So it became a very, very different approach. It was very, very well received. So far, we've, we've especially at the start of virtual learning, um, I really was concerned because the day was broken off into three hour segments, three hours Monday, three hours Wednesday, three hours Friday. Um, three different three hour Zooms was daunting. It was draining and it really, really was. 
Uh, and I was really concerned that people weren't going to stick it out through the whole thing, or they were going to drop or lose interest or just watch cat videos. Um, but we found a, a really high level of engagement. So we really tried to fine tune it and figure out why so that we didn't, you know, so that we can control the variation in our outcomes, right? I'm going to try to use the lean terminology, right? So um, I actually had people in the post surveys asking for more. They said, can I, I wish there was another session, a fourth session. I was like, you're crazy, but I love it, right? I, who would have thought that we'd have people asking for more Zoom sessions, right? Let me see if I, okay. Um, Part of the reason we went this way, and part of the reason we call it virtual learning, right, is that we, we looked around at the landscape at other people who were, who were doing virtual sessions. They were calling them virtual, you know, you know virtual this and virtual that. Um, and it made me sad because it really was just a recorded session, right? It felt that way as a participant, right? Nobody's allowed to talk and everyone be muted. And, and I'm actually gonna make sure that it's, it's webinar version. So you won't even see each other in the room. Uh, you won't know who's answering the Q&A, right? We might have a poll in there to, to see what feedback you have. But it really felt very passive for a lot of the folks. Um, and when I think of, I have a PlayStation. I don't know if anyone else here does, gamers, hey. I have the virtual headset. And that really makes you feel immersed. Like you're in the space, like you're, you're moving. You're like, you can feel almost like you're falling when you go down in the, in the game, right? Um, that's virtual, right? So I wanted to get closer to that. So I wanted to capture the virtue of all of the learning experience. So I didn't want to call it virtual. And to call it digital kind of felt weird. So I call it virtual, right? That's kind of the way that I approach this. And if you, if you take these nuggets and you apply them, I hope that you'll maybe start spreading the seed of that terminology and really try to drive this, this idea of, you know, why should people watch this session? Why should people participate in this session? Uh, and then differentiating those two. Like if it's something that they could just watch, great, have them watch it. If it's something that you want them to ask questions of and to participate in, then that's a really different approach and a different set of outcomes and requirements. Okay, so we talked about these sort of high level buckets. Now I started by saying lead by example. That kind of means lead with examples, right? The first example was the video, right? Show them something they haven't seen before. As we're going through our Yellow Belt class and as I'm going through this session, I'm gonna be giving you hopefully a lot of examples of where these things have been successful. Kind of like what I just did with our Yellow Belt slides, right? Um, Another example of leading by example is when we did the, uh, the icebreakers and I said, here's what I want you guys to do. And I really tried to, uh, I tried to display that I, I, I misstepped. I'm, I'm nobody's nerfic, right? Um, but you can see how we're, we're displaying the learning as we're going through. Getting to know the group, we did a little bit with the icebreakers. I know mandatory fun seems a little weird for folks and sometimes you get a little, mm, get a little shifty about it. Try to make it fun. I apologize, I'm still waking up in the morning. This is my coffee. All right, being your true self, part of being my true self is admitting that I need an energy boost uh, in some of these sessions and, and I still too am nervous and imperfect. Making it interactive, right? Icebreakers are fun, polls are fun, making sure people have the opportunity to ask questions. I'm gonna pause here. Does anyone have any questions around anything that I've said so far? I've got a question about what the platform was that you were making the sushi in. You had a screenshot of it? Yep. So what this is, is this is actually a screenshot within a screenshot. Let me actually get my marker here. Okay, so um, this image here is actually just a screenshot of this video game called Overcooked. It is a lovely, very messy process game. If you are a process driven person, this game is gonna drive you nuts. It'll have you shaking in your chair and just going, ah, they need to fix this process because it's so bad, um, but it's great. Um, the larger screenshot that it's actually embedded in is just PowerPoint. Um, essentially what I did is I took pieces of it and I, I broke them out. Um, what they're doing in this activity is they're creating a future state map. So I give them an opportunity to change the layout of the kitchen um, and they're, they're going to be developing a future state. The one on the right um, is just another PowerPoint slide, but it shows how we use this, the same pen that I'm using right now to draw. Um, this is an example of doing a waste walk. So we have them marking if things are value add, non-value add, uh, potentially wasteful calling out the wastes. Um, does that answer your question? Yeah, was it over crush? Overcooked. Cooked. Over, overcooked. It's so much fun if you haven't seen it. It's so bad. Um, uh, we, we actually started using it because I was looking for, I was trying to ideate about what we could do. Um, and I was playing this game and it was driving me nuts. And I was like, I wish I could improve this kitchen. When I fired up the game, uh, there's text on the screen. Normally it says, you know, if you're photosensitive, be careful. The first text that actually came on was, 
please use this game and its footage in any way you see fit. And I was like, oh, thank you. So I'm going to use it to create a class and drive people nuts. Um, so that was sort of my open door. Uh, I, I've since emailed them to let them know what we're doing and make it official. Um, they haven't yet responded to my email, but I'm super, super excited to be using that, to be using that game as this platform for learning. All right. Any others? Thank you for asking the question. I appreciate it. Okay. Making it interactive beyond just the polls and beyond just the icebreakers. How can we get people to, uh, to participate, right? I'm going to show folks new tools like Zoom or whiteboarding or whatever it is. Um, first, preface the tool. Talk about it. Hey, this, I, I found this tool. Here's what it is. Here's how we're going to use it. And then make your first interaction in the tool fun. Make sure that it's a, a low risk, uh, something that if they do it wrong, that's okay. Just, just having some sort of fun. And then you can move on to getting some work done. We do this in our Yellow Belt class. We show them, especially since we want them to be comfortable facilitating actual projects, we show them a number of different tools. We have Teams, we have OneDrive, we have uh, Zoom whiteboarding, we have Lucidchart, Lucidspark, we have Chromap. Um, it really it varies in a lot of different ways. Uh, it depends on sort of the audience too and the amount of time that we have. Um, but anytime we're showing them a tool, we wanna preface it. We wanna first give them the foundation of what is this thing? Because imagine just being plopped into some new software you've never seen before and then being asked to use it. Um, it can be scary, right? And it can make you disengage a little bit. And I have an anticipation of participation across the nation. So let's try this out. So we did say lead by example and with example. So one thing I wanna show everyone here is a thing called annotations. Annotations is one of my favorite things to do in Zoom. So many people use Zoom um, and maybe some don't know that this even exists. So here's what I'd like for everyone to do in this space, not at this moment, but in about 30 seconds. So at the top of the shared screen window where you see my, my screen and all, my, and all its glory, you should see you are currently viewing Antonio Nava's shared screen, right? Next to that, there's a thing that says view options. And that's actually a button. If you click that button, it gives you a little drop down menu. One of those options should be annotate. Um, so go ahead and do that now. So click view options and then click the button that says annotate in the drop down. You're going to get a bar like this one down here at the bottom. It says I don't mouse, check, draw. I don't have that on mine. Are you on a Macintosh computer potentially or uh, the web version or anything like that? Oh, I don't, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't use Zoom. I'm really unfamiliar with it. I've, I've got a view button and it's just giving me standard side by side, side by side gallery speaker and exit. Ah, okay, so it's not the view button. It should be one that says view options, not just view. And it, it, no. it should be next to the green box oh. that says you are currently viewing Antonio Nava's oh. shared screen. All right, I've got it, sorry, yeah. Thank no, you. No, absolutely, no worries. And that's something you should anticipate as well, is those kinds of questions. Um, we, we've done this a lot. Actually, one of the things that we started doing at the very beginning was an orientation session. So we bucketed 30 minutes for folks. Um, and we invited them. I can see folks who are getting the annotations in. We invited them to this 30 minute orientation. We said, we're gonna be using Teams. We're gonna be using Zoom annotation. We're gonna be using OneDrive. We're gonna be using this, this, and this. If you don't know how to use any of those things or, or one of the many, come to this orientation session. We're gonna confirm that you have access. We're gonna show you how to use it. So we did all that free work in this orientation session. Um, but now we've actually, um, we've actually Im uh, implemented it into the class. Now we bake it into the learning. So before we start using it, we, we have that little five minute learning segment there. Is anyone, I see folks are enjoying this. Is anyone having, still having difficulty or want me to re-walk through the steps of how to engage annotations? Okay, so um, I do wanna call out a couple of things. One, as I, as the facilitator, start moving through my slides, the annotations remain. So that's one thing to note is that you need to make sure that you clear them all before you move on in your slides. Um, don't push this button right now this minute because I still wanna do, keep doing Zoom. But another thing, um, the control bar that has all of, your, uh, all of your annotation controls, there's a red X at the far right of it. Don't click it right now, don't click it right now. But make sure that when we're done with the activity that you click that red X. And the reason why is because if you go to, uh, let's say you're gonna go click on an email or Zoom, you're gonna go back to your cat videos, that sort of thing. Um, I'll see hearts and stars start showing up on my presentation with your name on it, and I'll know that you're not paying attention to my presentation. So it's a good way to call out folks. Um, okay, so um, I've used this for a number of different things. Um, <laughs> the main way that I've seen this on project work is that I have, um, let's, say we're, let's say we're fixing a website. We have a website, and we're on Zoom, somebody's screen sharing, 
And I'm like, what's that green thing next to the box there? And they're like, what are you talking about? This thing? I'm like, no, 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 no. Go scroll down a little bit. No, no, you went too far. Go back up. No, no. Okay. So, so the box next to the, I, I have cut all of that waste out and I just start annotating and I circle it. I go, this thing right here, move it that way. And I'll put where I need it to go. Um, I've used this for dot voting, right? I put 10 different ideas up on the board and I say, which one do we want to go with? Everyone annotate and put a heart on the thing that you want to work on today, right? Um, it's really, really useful. And then I is actually the, I, I should be the only one that has this ability, but I can actually grab text. So I can move oh, segments of the cat, I guess, maybe not the whole cat. I can move some of the tags around. So for affinity mapping, right? If we have a bunch of people who are putting the same kinds of things, I can start grouping them together. Um, so super cool. So I've used this in combination with a number of things for data gathering. I might put up, here's 10 different kinds of errors that we see and how frequently do you see them? And now we have a quick histogram with all my SMEs. Um, okay, so let me just clear annotations. All right, we're gonna pause for just a moment. I'm going to move on. So I did say, if I press clear all, will it clear everyone's drawings? Let's check it out. Let's test it out. So everyone add some stamps real quick. Boop, 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 boop. And then who had that question of if I clear all? I'm not clearing all. Somebody else is doing it. So it looks like it does. So there's clear think, my drawings. I think it works. Okay. So there's clear my drawings and there's clear all drawings, right? And it, I think we've now confirmed, I guess that's not something I thought about before. If somebody else presses clear all, will it clear everyone else's? And uh, I think the answer is yes. All right, perfect. So let's jump in and um, I did say, where's my slide? Here we go. So make the first interaction low risk. So first we've prefaced the tool. We've sort of gone into the tool. We've been a little fun with it. Um, but we're gonna now do an activity. We're gonna try to make this useful a little tiny bit. All right. So on the left side and the right side, this has, uh, I think there's like six differences between these two. If folks can put a little heart or an arrow or what have you on the differences. We'll give you uh, 30 seconds. Good. Okay, so we've got a, a missing piece there. There's the, the color difference between those two pipes is another one. Yep, yep. Oh, the red and the blue on those pipes on the, on the left side. Oh, that one has wheels and this one has a flat, sure. One, two, three, four. I think there's one more. Two pipes. Did somebody catch it? I don't think it's in the back corner. I think it's in the foreground. One, two, five, one, two, five, two pipes, two pipes. There's one more. Maybe there's only five. Maybe I forgot. <laughs> okay, so. Great, now I've validated everyone has the ability to annotate. We've done it in a low risk way. I'm going to clear all annotations and now we're gonna make this useful, hopefully for everyone, clear all drawings. So for the next activity, what I want you to do, I'm giving this presentation. Why? Am I the perfect person to give this presentation? Maybe, I don't think I am. You all came here for some reason. But you all have experiences as well, and I want to learn from those because, again, nerfic. So nerfing. So I want to get some work done. So the first thing I want you to do, I want you to uh, use the annotation feature, add text onto the screen for a time that a, you were watching a presentation and they really made you want to go do something else or, <laughs> or watch a cat video. They just totally lost you. So add some text on my screen um, that, you know, give me examples of or just something that a presenter did that made you completely check out. Go ahead and annotate. Perfect. Talking about something that was way too technical. Ooh, yeah, I like that. Read the bullets. Let me go ahead and move that text that it's, let me move that one down a little bit. Too much content, too fast. I hope I'm not doing that read what was on the screen. I am reading what's on the screen, but it's intentional right now. <laughs> Let's see, someone talking with low energy for a long time. Ooh, yeah, the monotone. Today, what we're gonna be doing, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, right? That instructor, Bueller, a lot of text, reading the text, going off on a tangent. Now, I do that a lot. I apologize. I Sometimes I will have tangents. Forcing paired conversations. Ooh, interesting. Someone talking with low energy, read rather than present, slightly different, but someone once fell asleep in one of my presentations. So you were giving a presentation and somebody fell asleep while you were presenting. Okay. 
<laughs> asked the group to read presentation before the session and <laughs> just read it again at the session. <laughs> okay, um, as these are coming on the board, I want us all to think about, are we guilty of any of these? Um, <laughs> if so, please stop. Uh, we're <laughs> or consider stopping or changing, right? What can we do about these things? Um, so uh, awesome, this is really, really great. Private joke between presenters. Oh, so like if me and Kevin were like, hey, remember that guy in Southeast Canada? <laughs> that guy. Uh, nobody knows what we're talking about. I like, I don't, yeah, okay, cool. All right, let me see here. That's not an actual inside joke. I know Kevin, but not that, not, not to that degree that we have inside jokes. When a breakout room and no clue what you're supposed to be doing. Ooh, yeah, too complex to remember. Instructions rush through, no instructions to refer to. I love that. Yeah, I, I think at the start, I might've done some of that. Um, Okay, so let's add check marks. I see a couple people adding check marks. That was my next piece. So go ahead and put a check mark if you have fallen victim to one of these. If you have been in a session and this thing happened to you, let's see what's the most frequent thing. What is the biggest problem? Reading the bullets, reading a lot of text. Audio quality got garbled. Ooh. Awesome. You can put more than one check mark on, on different things. So if you've experienced different things, please feel free to do that. Um, I don't want you to think you only have one vote. I probably should have given that instruction earlier. Um, don't place more than one check mark on a single item, but place check marks on as many of these as you've experienced. Overly enthusiastic PowerPoint animation. What does that mean? I love PowerPoint animation. You mean like they do it too often? Like every single slide has uh, PowerPoint like animation in between. <laughs> I guess it could be overused. Too much of a good thing. All right, perfect. Okay, so thank you for participating in that. I, you know what else about uh, this is uh, on your annotation bar, there's a save button. So that save button will save it as a little, a little capture image. So it, as you're going through these exercises, it's not just all for naught. And if you forgot to record the session, that's okay. If you just wanted a screen capture of what you're doing, you can always click save and it'll save an image in a little folder for you for later. Okay, so I'm gonna clear all the drawings. Okay, now let's let's go the opposite direction. What has a presenter done that really clicked for you, that really kept you engaged, that you think you might want to copy later, things like that? Not just what I've done, but what? Ah, <laughs> uh, all right. So go ahead and please uh, add annotations here. related a story to illustrate. I like that. Yeah, giving examples of where this actually happened. Kept slides simple and concise. Talked about something I can identify with. Has done so in a really human way. Pick a picture only presentation sticks in my mind. So like if there's no text on the screen and just, just pictures. Polls, somebody likes polls. I'm gonna put these two together. Make a dry subject engaging, told a story. Exactly what I was going to say. So I'll put this one back over here because that's actually supplemental to that one. Effective breakout session, enough time instruction. Somebody else said pose. Related to story. So I'm gonna put the stories together. That one's together. Wow, people are really engaged about this one. I love it. Maybe, I'm, maybe I have a biased sample, right? Everyone came to this session thinking about how to make presentations more engaging. Participation questions throughout. Use the game to illustrate an otherwise boring topic. I like this one, not just because I'm a gamer, but I'm really big fan of gamification. Gossip or personal funny sharing from the host. Oh, I have that in droves. No idea. Okay, Kahoot at the end to review the subject matter. Oh. You know what? Is that Kevin? Did Kevin write that one? I actually can validate. Let me see here. Oh, Sally. Oh, Shirley. Sorry. Shirley wrote that one. That, that near and dear to my heart. I actually use Kahoot. I love it. All right. I asked a great. I love how much participation we're getting in this one. Okay. I'm running out of room. Okay. So for this one, I'm going to say you have three votes. You have three check marks that you can put. So please. Choose wisely. Now, if you think um, being great fun and bringing great fun and energy is 
super, super important. You can put all three check marks on that one if you want, right? So we're gonna check, we're gonna poll the audience, if you will. And we're gonna say the next session we're gonna have, whichever ones have the highest heat map. You have three votes, go ahead and put your three votes. Uh, you can disperse them, or you can put all three on single ones or two on one and one on the other. Let's see what we get. Let's say tomorrow I will commit to giving a presentation that only does whichever ones get the most votes. Use the game. I'm going to start using games. I'm going to keep doing it, telling relatable stories, kahooting. All right. Looks like we are at, I kind of I kind of think of it like popcorn when you're, you know, you set your microwave. I don't know if folks do popcorn the same way I do. There's a popcorn button, but I normally just put four minutes and then I listen to the, the poppings. And when the popping starts slowing down, that's when I know it's time to move on. So I might set a timer of three or four minutes for whatever activity, um, but once the popping starts to slow down, I go, okay, so we're gonna move on to the next thing. Has everyone had a chance to participate? Great. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the screenshot. Anyone else is welcome to do the same if you want ideas for how to make your sessions uh, engaging in the future. Five, four, three, two, one. Clearing all drawings, perfect. Okay, make sure that you press the little X on your control bar for the annotations, otherwise, um, Again, you're gonna have an, uh, an issue here. How are we doing on time? We're supposed to go to, we're actually going a little bit over time. So let's not do that. All right, bringing them home, connecting the dots. Um, your sessions might look like this, right? This uh, Techman model, storming, forming, performing, norming, and adjourning. So forming is the icebreakers, the, uh, let's see, MS Teams yet again. <laughs> Information overload, that, that first bit's a little bit like a storm. Here's all of the things I need you to know. Then we can start to normalize it. We can say, look, here's how you use the tool. Here's a little bit of practice, here's some fun. And then putting the skills to good use as we have done. All right, thank you everyone. I wanna connect the dots at the end of it. It's part of the adjourning. Uh, one of the final things, remember I talked about this, this sort of structure, right? Lead by example, set expectations, get to know your group. It's a little misleading because it doesn't actually happen in this way. A lot of times it'll happen this way. I'm setting expectations, I'm getting to know the group. We're setting you on a path, we're bringing you home. And then we're celebrating hopefully at the end of it. But the entirety of the time, we try and we should try to lead by example or with examples, to be your true self throughout, to make it interactive throughout. So this is a more representative structure uh, for how I think virtual presentations should be provided. All right, so devil's in the details and proof is in the pudding. So if you think, oh, this might work for 12 people, but it would never work for 600, we've done this in a number of different ways. We've applied this sort of this approach to sessions that were small, to sessions that were recurring, to sessions that were short, to sessions that were several, several hours long. Uh, it's important to have tech support. So thank you, Kevin and others for being in my corner here for this session. Um, it's important to track time between the breaks. So letting me know, am I 10 minutes away? Am I 15 minutes away from uh, the next break or that sort of thing? Piloting or rehearsing. So make sure that you not only know your content, but you've run through your timings, that sort of thing. Um, music before and after has always been really helpful. Um, for Lean Six Sigma sessions, I'll often play Lean on Me before the session and see who gets the pun. Uh, it's one of my favorite things to do. <laughs> uh, oh, but you need to tinker with the tools. So I played with annotations extensively before I showed it to anyone. I tried to break it in as many ways as I could. I went into different browsers. I went into different computers. I asked other people to tinker with me before I put it on for the first time. And then as things came up, like I can't access this. I know what questions to ask. Are you in a Mac? Because I know that that's going to be placed in a different part of the screen. Are you in the web version, the app version? Sort of knowing and being comfortable with some of the reasons why there might be tripping blocks. But there's also not one ring to rule them all. If you get the Lord of the Rings reference, um, we so often get asked, what's the best tool for whiteboarding? There's not, right? Um, it really is going to depend on what are you trying to get out of the session? What activities do you think you're going to be doing? And most important, what are the people already the most uh, used to, right? Everyone here uses Google, great. Although I'm most familiar with Teams, I'm gonna use Google for this session because that's gonna have the least amount of ramp up time to get these folks into, into the activity, right? Um, so don't be afraid to tinker around with different tools. Um, there are so many nowadays, um, but see what works for you. And at the end, celebrate. So yay, thank you, we made it to the end of this session. Some folks thought it would never see the day. Um, oh yes, cat videos. Um, yeah, putting cat videos during the breaks, so much fun. 
Um, so please do send me an email if you have any questions. Um, if you would like the slide presentation, happy to send it to you. Um, memes never hurt either. I mean, you know, be tasteful with them, that sort of thing. I will often use Cahoots at the end of a session. If you don't know what that is, it's a very cool sort of interactive tool. Uh, who put hearts on the Lord of the Rings thing? <laughs> You can see how annotations, once you show people annotations, it becomes a, a little dangerous, right? People will start putting hearts and things, but that's okay. It makes it fun. At least that's, that's my opinion. Um, so um, thank you. Thank you for the session. I know we're approaching time. So I do wanna give some, some opportunity for questions. Um, what would you like to ask, if anything? <laughs> 